Madame la Présidente. Madame la Présidente, a very good afternoon and thank you. Distinguished members of the Security Council, Your Excellency Ambassador Fatima Mohamed, Permanent Observer of the African Union to the United Nations, Assistant Secretary General Martha Amapobi, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Madam President, for convening this important meeting on cooperation between the United Nations and regional organizations, including the African Union, amidst heightened global tensions that require the full attention of this Council. The report of the Secretary General on strengthening the partnership between the United Nations and the African Union on issues of peace and security in Africa, including the work of the United Nations Office to the African Union, provides an update on the key achievements and milestones in the strategic partnership between the United Nations and the African Union on issues of peace and security. It also outlines the serious challenges to peace and security across the continent and underscores the strategic importance and indeed necessity of the partnership between the United Nations and the African Union. This strategic partnership continues to grow from strength to strength. We command the Security Council and the, United, the AU Peace and Security Council for prioritizing collaboration and information sharing. We welcome the constructive and cordial deliberations at the last informal seminar and annual joint consultative meeting of the two councils held a year ago in Addis Ababa and look forward to an equally productive meeting in two weeks' time under the joint leadership of Switzerland and Egypt. During the reporting period, the two councils have also significantly increased the frequency of the monthly informal coordination meetings between the incoming president of the Security Council and incoming chairperson of the AU PSC, providing opportunities for enhanced synergies and complementarity. We also recognize the important role of the, Af of the three African members of the Security Council, the A3, who provide a critical link between the two councils. Special representatives and envoys of the United Nations and the African Union and other senior officials frequently brief the two councils, sometimes jointly offering critical insights and analysis to inform decision making. During the reporting period, UNOAU and other United Nations entities also briefed the Peace and Security Council on at least 30 occasions including at meetings held at the level of heads of states and government. The two organizations also continue to meet in both formal and informal settings to share information and analysis and to coordinate responses to Africa's peace and security challenges across the entire conflict cycle. This includes the annual conference between the Secretary General and the chairperson and other meetings, of course, the high-level strategic dialogues co-chaired by the Deputy Secretary General and the Deputy Chairperson of the Commission, meetings of the joint UN-AU Task Force on Peace and Security, and the joint retreat of the UN and AU Special Representatives and Envoys in Africa. Staff-level collaboration between the two organizations also continue to be a major feature of the UN-AU partnership, allowing for joint analysis and planning. A recent example being the preparations for the successor arrangements for ATMIS and the joint consultations to unpack Resolution 2719, on which SG uh, Pobi will shortly provide an update on the operationalization process. 
Moreover, the United Nations and the, United, and the African Union are closely coordinating efforts to help address complex political transitions facing several countries, including through the Africa facility to support inclusive transitions, AFSIT established by African head of states and government. Madam Chair, the, the, the foregoing, though not exhaustive, shows the effectiveness, dynamisms, and wide-ranging nature of UN-AU partnership. As the Council is aware, several African countries and subregions continue to face significant challenges to achieving lasting peace, security, and sustainable development. The Horn of Africa continues to be confronted with several destabilizing conflicts driven by political instability, territorial disputes, and an ever-worsening humanitarian situation. The AU IGAD UN collaboration in responding to these challenges remains essential for sustainable peace in the region. The conflict in Sudan has resulted in a grave humanitarian emergency leading to the largest forced displaced crisis in the world involving over 10 million people, of which more than 2 million have fled to neighboring countries. We commend the sustained diplomatic efforts in recent months to end this deadly conflict. The AUC-led expanded mechanism continues to be a useful coordination platform for joint messaging to the belligerents to prioritize inclusive civilian-led political solutions and to silence the guns. In the Sahel region, political instability and violence have intensified, while uncertainty characterizes transition processes in Burkina Faso, Guinea, Mali, and Niger. Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger have decided to withdraw their membership of the economic community of West African states and to establish a new alliance of Sahel states. The United Nations and African Union are working to enhance their collective support in advancing democratic transitions in the region, working closely with ECOWAS. More broadly, we welcome the informal engagements between the AUPSC and the countries in political transitions, aiming at facilitating the return to constitutional order, including just recently in Gabon. In the Great Lake region, the 30 July ceasefire agreement between the Democratic Republic of the Congo and Rwanda facilitated by Angola has translated into a reduction of fighting between conflict parties in North Kivu. I wish to commend President Joao Lorenzo of Angola for his steadfast effort through the Rwanda process to resolve, to restore peace and security in Eastern Democratic Republic of the Congo. Continued regional and international support is crucial to sustain this milestone. We must remain attentive to the suffering of the civilian population who continue to face atrocities by armed groups and are forced to leave their homes. All groups must lay down their weapons and disarm. The commitment of the member states of the Southern African Development Community, SADC, to support peace efforts through the deployment of the SADC mission in the Democratic Republic of, of the Congo is also commendable. The United Nations, through Resolution 2746, and the African Union have reiterated their commitment to support these efforts. For sustainable peace to be restored in Eastern Democratic Republic of the Congo and the region, addressing the root causes, including through political initiatives, such as the Rwanda and the Nairobi processes and the quadripartite process facilitated by the African Union, is indeed a sine qua non. Madame la Présidente, excellent. Madam President. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. 
the link between climate change and peace and security is a reality that cannot be denied in Africa. The impact of climate change is putting to the test the resilience of states which are already vulnerable. It's bringing to the fore adaptation gaps and uh, the inadequacy of the response that's been mounted so far. Against this backdrop, we must commend the substantive headway that's been made by African states, for instance, in Nairobi, where recently the process geared towards achieving a common African position on the climate, peace and security was uh, finalized. Recently, a climate, peace and security center for the Horn of Africa was established, and this will help to offer support to, I get, incorporating the entire African Union. A peace, climate and security envoy will be appointed within UNOAU, something that's been made possible thanks to the generous contribution of your own country, Switzerland. And this envoy will play a key role in seeking to deepen cooperation with the African Union in this area. As for the Women, Peace and Security agenda, the, Na the United Nations is working hand-in-hand -hand with the African Union Commission, promoting women's leadership and working to put an end to violence against women and girls. Gender parity objectives are something that's front of mind in AU-led mediation processes. Madam President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the partnership between the African Union and the UN is particularly dynamic because we are both committed to multilateralism. The Secretary General is right when he says that this partnership is a cornerstone of effective and necessary multilateralism absolutely vital to confront the challenges of our time, which are complex. Today's meeting is taking place just 10 days after the adoption of the Pact for the Future, which, inter alia, calls for the strengthening of cooperation between the United Nations and regional organizations so as to achieve the maintenance of international peace and security. And on this note, if I may, I'd like to congratulate all member states on their commitment and, in particular, applaud the key contribution provided by the African group, with the support of the AU Commission. This underscores the key role that Africa plays in promoting an effective, fair and inclusive multilateral system. Excellencies, allow me to make a few closing comments. In spite of all the daunting challenges Africa still faces, there are reasons to remain optimistic. We can indeed build on the virtuous cycle of encouraging developments that are sparking a greater sense of hope in better outcomes. These include Africa's resilience, people, and resourceful women and youth, their stated preference for democratic rule against all odds, the recently gained G20 membership, the newly adopted Pact for the Future in favorance of a network and more effective multilateral system, just to mention a few. Knowing the special attention this Council gives to Africa, I have every reason to believe that we will all choose hope over despair and rally around a partnership that is purposeful, smarter, and grounded in a fairer global environment, which can be better support a genuine African Renaissance. Finally, I would like to take this opportunity to pay special tribute to the African Union Commission, particularly Chairperson Musafaki Mohamad, for his wise leadership and his dedication to the UN-AU partnership, for which Commissioner Bankole Adehoye and my dear sister yourself, Ambassador Fatima, have also been instrumental. In this leadership team, 
the United Nations has greatly benefited from a dependable and like-minded partner in pursuit of the shared aspiration to build an enduring strategic and institutionalized partnership between our two organizations. As Chairperson Musafaki Mahmoud nears the end of his term of office, I wish to renew my sincere gratitude for his steadfast support over the years and convey to him my very best wishes for the future. Madam President, Excellencies, I thank you for your kind attention.